Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tessin for those that are new here. And in today's video, as you could have seen from the title, I'm going to be doing a video on, you know, advice to my younger self. And I'm doing this video, first of all, I'm young. I'm always young. In my head, I'm 16, so... I don't want to be way a day older than 18 in my head, but you know, life happens and we're growing older. Anyway, a few days ago, I put up a poll on my Insta stories and I was talking about, you know, people should give me suggestions for videos to film. And someone said, you know, do a video on advice to your younger self, the things that you wish you knew now, uh, or you wish that you knew then, judging from what you know now. And I was like, oh yeah, someone has actually requested this video a few months ago. And for some reason, I thought I was going to film it, but I couldn't make time to. So pardon me, we're doing that today. So I'm going to be doing maybe advice to my younger self from ages, let me say 16 till about 25. Yeah, so but if you'd like to know all about that, definitely keep watching. Um, as I usually say in all of my videos, this video is basically from my own personal experience. I do not claim to be the fountain of knowledge. Only God is the fountain of knowledge. But I'm going to share from my own life experiences the things that I've learned. I'm so I'll see if I can, you know, divide this video into sections, maybe on love, on dating, on money, on person, on faith. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be able to give myself advice for each, you know, each sphere of my life as a younger person. So let's look at, you know, faith. The first advice I'll give myself is, you know, just stay on course. Because I, 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 I think I've shared my salvation story before on this channel. A video I did years ago. I would see if I can find it. I'll maybe link it in the description box. Is that the first thing is stay on course. Then I was a growing Christian. I still am a growing Christian. But I would say a very, if was anything younger than baby Christian, I was then. And I was just getting to know God for myself. And there was a lot of, would I say, distractions. I had a lot of struggles. I had a lot of things that, you know, <laughs> were waging war against my faith and my belief system and if i were to look back now i would tell myself to stay on course like god is going to reveal himself to you in ways that nobody else can convince you otherwise and also god is going to walk with you and make you so confident in him that you can be doing what you're doing now you can be able to not just live a life that you know is chasing after the heart of god a heart that is you know basking in the love of god but a heart that also cares for the salvation of other people so just and stay on course as in that's what i would just tell myself so also that may even apply to you as maybe a young believer watching my video or someone that's just you know getting into so what's even this christianity thing, thing all about in case you're not even a believer you're not even a christian or you don't even come from a christian background you might just just i'm just encouraging you to just stay on course that you just god is faithful you just keep studying those scriptures you know, in then when I was like maybe a young Christian, I would go online, I would research. In fact, in my secondary school, in my the latter years, as when I was maybe saying SS3, I used to go to the library, I would research things about the Bible. In fact, I wrote one very, very powerful article, article about heaven then, when I was in my final year, and I pinned it to my to the bulletin board in my hostel. And then my room my house mistress, she was born again. She, you know what they will call SU, scripture union, that's who she was then. And she actually called me to her room and she just kind of counseled me and encouraged me. And she said, you know, to say, you know, you are such a fantastic writer, keep writing. And that thing encouraged me. So that was, that was the first time I probably even dabbled into what blogging. When I was not even blogging, I read online about heaven and I wrote the article and I pinned it to my bulletin board, as, as I said, in my boarding school then. So, you know, just stay on course, keep being inquisitive. God, see, the Bible says that come to me, he will thirst and I will give you rest. And, you know, the rest and joy that I can say with all confidence that I'm enjoying now in Christ did not just come, you know, on the day I accepted God, God as my personal Lord and Savior. Spiritually, God already given me that, but I'm not sure I received it the day I accepted God personally as an adult. You know, it came with... Um, Lots of understanding, lots of spending time in the world, lots of obedience, lots of lessons, lots of chastising. Oh, God has chastised me so much. So I would say to myself in my faith as aspect, stay on course. And another thing also I would say to my younger self is that, you know what I'm saying, get rid of those friends. Truly and truly, bad company corrupts good manners. I know that this thing may sound very dull, but or some people will be like, mm, really? Or some people may be like, oh, you know what, I can be the only one in my circle that I'm born again and everybody else can be, you know, ungodly. As a baby Christian, I think that's just foolishness. You know, it's like you're learning to speak a new language. You're learning to speak French and you decide to move to a country where nobody can speak French. 
you are going to lose the ability to speak French. Even no matter how you study online or on French, you're not able to exercise that new language with other people. You're not able to speak that language with people. You're not able to harness that new skill that you've learned. So I'll say also back then as a teenager, I would say, you know, get rid of those friends. Those friends then, I don't know where they're doing now because, you know, life has separated us in different parts of the world. But as I then, even me, I'm sure I was a bad influence. You know what I mean? So get rid of those friends. When I was growing up, I would have, I wish I, I, I mean, doesn't mean that those things that I did there or those mistakes that I made as a growing Christian did not, you know, somehow build me up to the woman I am today. But I truly believe, and I've shared on my channel before, that God does not blind us to show us the way. He's not that kind of God. He doesn't need to show you prepare for you to have sense. No. I always say this as well. You don't need to get burnt to learn. You can learn through the scars of other people. So also, I'm sure that if I had better friends then, some of the challenges, some of the struggles, some of the chastising that I experienced, I would not have needed to experience it. Like, I have no reason to be sad i had no reason to ruin my reputation i had no reason to to lose my esteem i had no reason to feel you know I, there was no reason for all those things like if i had just had better circle that was after to come and don't do that i would have known better so that's an advice also for my faith to my younger self which leads me you know to my next point is you know what if you're not dating to marry you're dating for heartbreak I don't know if you've heard that statement before or that's it. I don't know who came up with it, but I think I was reading an article on Quora and I actually saw that. If you're not dating to marry, you're dating for heartbreak. And I know that people will be like, oh, you don't need to date to marry. You're dating to meet people. Mm, yeah, but I mean, by in the, in the sense of dating, I mean courting. You have no business. The Bible says, don't wake up love. Don't awaken love. The Bible says, do not give your pearls to pigs. Not saying that the people that I dated them were pigs, but I, you guys, my first relationship was when I would say when I just left secondary school and it was with someone almost 10 years older than me. In fact, what am I saying? Almost. I think I was 16 or 17 and the guy was like in his early 20s, but we were still, I mean, I was I felt in my head. Now I look back, that's actually a crime. But this guy, we dated till I was in like, or this man, till I was my first year. And it was just a conundrum of rubbish. I don't even know if that, that word is right in this context. But I had no business being in relationships. From that one, I jumped to my next relationship, my first year boyfriend. First year relationships got that. I had a boyfriend every new semester. Okay, maybe not every new semester. Every new year, I had a new boyfriend. In fact, it felt like every new semester. I had... Uh, I did a four-year course, guys. I think I had five boyfriends. Right. May God have mercy on me. Really. I'm not even... In fact, I'm laughing now, but it's actually not funny. I don't pray that for my child. In fact, I rebuke it for my child. But yes, that was me back then. And, you know, we thank God for His grace. If you're not dating, you know, conscious, consciously with the desire to say, you know what, this person I'm committing to be in a relationship with, am I... Do I see myself ending up with this person? Does this person look like someone that I think God has designed for me? Does this person have the attributes that I think that I want my child to take after? Does this person have all the qualities that I think can make us compatible? Do we have the same belief systems? That's why I said children have no business dating. Children have no business having babies. You just, you don't need all of that. As in, if you're watching this video, you've not had any child, you're not married, you are still a single person, please rethink your choice of current partner. In fact, I have a video that I did I think when I just did my registry wedding and it's titled, I think 10 questions to ask before you get married. I think it's a good watch. I think it's a really good watch. I would link it. Please go back and watch that video. So back to myself, twisting you had no business dating all those guys. I was just stirring up emotions in my heart. I leave one relationship to the other. It wasn't, and it, didn't, it did not also help that I was in an environment where, you know when you're in your prime, a lot of guys will be twisting you. You know, I had, in fact, I don't know. You know how people say they have challenges that, oh, that they are not meeting guys. Then, that was, I'm talking about, as I said, uni days. Oh, I finished university when I was, I think, 20. I finished university really early. Is that 20 or 21? Or even 19? I'm not even sure now. Yeah. So, I finished university really early. And you guys, imagine the amount of relationships I had, you know, in that period. After university, I only dated one person. And it was a person I was also dating in my last year. And after that, I broke up that relationship and I met my husband. So... That's that. So, but that relationship, as I, or those relationships, I had no business being them. They just opened my heart to lust. 
they opened my heart to what would I even call it um depravedness they opened my 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 heart to you know sexual sin they opened my heart to not like I said I was having sex with these people so please like the five people that I dated not like I said I wasn't having sex and that wasn't the case but you're not having sex but I was doing everything else with them and it just it waged war against my growth in Christ and it was just a this was this was someone that you know I received the gift of speaking in tongues when I was I think 17 or 18 years old so you can imagine being able to speak in tongues and then the next day you and your boyfriend are going to a hotel to go and make out and do, do rubbish and then you get back home and you're reading the Bible you you are just you are a walking contradiction like you are just contradicting your walk with God you know so it was just it was a necessary struggle it didn't allow me grow in Christ it didn't I, I felt like a hypocrite evangelizing I couldn't evangelize I couldn't even take everything that you know I know that God desired for me for those stages in my life I wasn't able to fulfill this and that's the truth you know I just thank God for the grace of restoration but it was just unnecessary I had no business awakening those love so I was saying advice to myself is that Tossi, you did not need those people. You did not need to be in a relationship to any anybody. So I wish I knew better. But thank God, as I said, for His grace and where we are at today. We give grace. See, I would say maybe um, an advice to my younger self. I would have given to my young, younger self was on finance. You know, I grew up in a very entrepreneurial home. So as soon as I became, let me say, an adult, I've never, to the glory of God, I've never been in a place of extreme lack. I've always had, you know, God has always given me an opportunity to be able to earn. So if it's not from a 9 to 5, it will be from my blogging. I blogged for many years and it was a good source of income. At least, you know, good enough. Then I started a business. I started, I mean, this is this business I'm doing now is my second official business. So I've always had a way to, you know, means to make money. And I would say I wasn't the most prudent person. So an advice my younger self would have been to say, save, save, save. You guys, I will buy, buy, buy. I would just go to the company. There's something nice. It's not expensive. I don't know what I need to just do just to sell. Because I sell eyelashes and I'm like... I'll just, I'll just do the math in my head. It's not just to sell eight eyelashes. I beg, I can buy the shirts. I can buy. So stupid. So, but <laughs> those are the things that I spent my money on. I wish I saved, saved, saved. And then, you know, when I came here for masters and I went back to Nigeria, you know, God supernaturally provided, you know, a lump sum of money for me. And foolishly, I went to go and change that money to Naira. I changed a huge sum of that. Not everything. I changed a lump sum that if I change that money to the UK today, back to pounds today, or if I change that money back to Naira today, that that, that 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 money could have built a house in other states you know and so i was very foolish with that money i don't think i was a good steward you know to that money as well so oh i i wasn't say i was a horrible steward because we thank god you know businesses came out of this but still i don't think i handled it as the perfect will of god let me put it that way yeah the perfect will of god for that money i wished i sold that money i wished i used that money to help people i wished i used that money not like i said people i didn't help it but um maybe on a grander scale, maybe I'll just okay, you know this person, I'm going to sponsor this person from primary school to university, you know. I'll, not like I see this money is like 30 million, so people not think I have any money somewhere, no. But for a young person then, that was a lump sum of money and I did not manage it well. So an advice to my younger self is, you know, be financially educated, listen to your dad. Your parents are always right. My parents are the most prudent people that I know ever. Like my parents are literally the most prudent people I know actually listen to your parents take their advice and do everything that they ask you to do so as regards finance that's an advice to my younger self okay so let me talk about on self like self-esteem ah, to be honest when i look back would i say i had a healthy self-esteem i think i had an okay self-esteem but i sort of sought for the validation of people so maybe people were doing this in my uni you know and you see that's why I went to one of, I would consider one of the best universities in Nigeria, but in my own time, we were so vain because they didn't allow cars, they didn't allow cell phones, they didn't allow anything. So a lot of things that they allowed, maybe like fashion, kind of ruled a lot of the students. So when you want to say that, oh, is someone, then I don't know about what's raining now because I mean, this is, I'm talking about since 2000 and, 2009, 2000 it's 2009. It's been a long time, you know, the thing, this is almost 11 years. So some of the things that, 
I would say that um, what used to give us like street cred in school, for lack of a better word, was you know clothing, how you looked, was she pretty, was she well spoken, you know, did you go on holiday for some, you know, stupid things that obviously when I think now have no nothing to do with the well well rounded individual, but these were the things that you know used to give us street cred then, and we all not. We all did, no, we all, the, the, the clique that I was in, we all did a lot of things for, you know, to impress one another. Oh, when you come back to school, the first thing I want to say is, oh, let me see your locker, let me see your wardrobe, which shirts is you, but, you know, stupid things that, it's so heartbreaking that I know that some 35-year-olds still live their lives like that now, but, you know, back then, I, I would say that I did seek for validation from my friends, from my community, you know, from my school then, and I would tell myself now that, just say, nobody cares, like, if you had died to that time, somebody else would have come out. Nobody cares. Like, you be you, do you, be yourself, serve the Lord. I joined a service unit, continue in your service unit. Like, just be real, be yourself. And I just thank God that, you know, I think I got that memo a year before I graduated. And even after on, God has just been helping me on that journey. I consider myself now very... I don't care. I do what I want to do. I say what I want to say. Nobody can come and flog me. Nobody can come and beat me. My confidence is in Christ. Like, nothing determines. That's why, you know, I can, on my social media pages, I can be myself. I can tell you how it is. I, there's no reason for me to put up an air of, you know, perfect. Not Nothing like, I don't know, none, you know. So, and I actually, I wish that I did that earlier. But as I said, we thank God for where God has brought us till now. So, I'll tell myself, I'll tell you as a younger person watching me, that nobody cares. Be yourself. People love you when you're unapologetically you. Or those that will love you truly will love you when you're yourself. Don't worry about anybody. Don't. Your dad will give you 300 pounds. Can you imagine then? 300 pounds is still a lot of money now. When I travel, my dad will give me 300 pounds. I'll use everything. I'll use it to buy clothes. Do you have sense? Just so that when I get to school, I'll be like, er. Or I'll use, ah, hey, hey, God. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> what? To say I was dumb. Wow. But well, we thank God for Jesus. Like, but we just really thank God, thank God. But you know, like, don't care, just be yourself. You know, don't need to lie. You don't need to make up stories that you're not. Not just be yourself. Like, God has made you to be so amazing. You just live in that understanding and that identity in Christ Jesus. I wish I knew that earlier. And there's so much freedom that comes in just living your life after the heart of God. That's another advice that I would say I'll give myself. Is there anything else that you know that I would tell myself besides I've talked about faith, I've talked about this, I've talked about money. What else do I talk about? Oh, business. I, I mean, I don't really have any advice to give. Well, would I really say I had an advice to give my younger self for business? I, I think I already covered it in the financial, you know, aspect of it. Yeah, I think I think I already kind of did. So, there's, there's really not much I would give to myself besides, you know, I think the faith one really shook me. I wish I knew a lot of things that I knew, knew now. But as I said, we give God all the glory. Then another thing I would say maybe advice to my younger self is, you know, um... Let me think. Is there anything that comes to mind? I don't know. I think, you know, I don't know. That's that's just all that comes to mind. If anything, I will put it on the screen. But nothing comes to mind. But yeah, so that's about it for this video. You know, as much as I know that it's been parts that were very, very good. I try to keep it as relaxed as possible. Just so that you guys can enjoy this video. It's, it will be nice to share with your friends as well. So yeah, shout out to everyone that um, keeps loving my videos. Keeps... Um, commenting, keeps sharing, keeps sending me messages to say we're not seeing you on YouTube, come back. I appreciate you. I'll do my best to keep churning out content. You guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but as I've been filming this video, the light has been going in and out. So those are some of the challenges that I face, you know, filming a video. Also, my baby has been crying. I had to take her to go and meet her dad, you know, just because he's working as well. So it's, it's quite challenging filming and I really know literally. Now she's crawling, she's very active. I filmed a video earlier and she literally almost threw the tripod away. So... <laughs> Those are some of the challenges that I'm facing, but I trust that, you know, it's just a phase. Once she's a bit older and I can tell her, go and sit down there and she's able to go and sit down there. I'm sure there will be more and more and more and more content out for you. So thank you guys again for watching this video. I hope you remain blessed, remain wonderful, remain lovely. Make sure you like, make sure you share and make sure you leave a comment. Until next time, stay blessed. Bye-bye.